So the request of Velcro, Velcro dot. Hey Tindy, just the right time, buddy. We are about to start the lesson. Awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, the request of Velcro, Velcro dot that was made possible by the generosity of BA Checkmate was to show you a couple of uh, games where we are chasing kings. Like there was no tomorrow, and uh, very briefly, I'm going to go through the. The legendary Thomas, um, uh, last last cat Thomas game that uh, triggered this whole conversation, which basically starts off from this position, which in my opinion every chess player should know. It's a beautiful combo and a remarkably lovely game. The idea with the last move of Queen e7 by I think Sir George Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, was that after Knight f6 he actually recaptures with the pawn. That's defending the pawn rather than mate threat on h7. However, Laska, who by the way was not the world champion Laska, it's Edward Laska who played this with white, um, went or rather chose a different route and took on h7 with the queen introducing this remarkable queen sack, where after king takes knight takes f6 double check, meant that the king was in real trouble. And of course, after king h8, we have got an immediate mate. And so king h6 was forced, and now there's the check started to rain upon the black king that was forced further and further and further out into the open. And actually here h4 was played, but I must add that f4 is a faster mate, uh, or at least uh, as quick as this one is. g3 check, king f3, and here actually the devil, the engine itself, wants to play castles with an unstoppable knight h2 mate, that, but that's because the engine has no sense of beauty whatsoever. And uh, the engine sucks at that and overlooks that after check, rook h2, king g1 and castles. We have got a marvelous mate. And the symmetry is beautifully stunning because the king walked from here all the way out to here, which is just uh, too nice to be true. Now, as for game two, and I need to keep in mind that I need to add these uh, PGNs later to you guys to the chat. I'm going to show you one that is really, really not that well known. Although I do believe that I have spoken about this at length at various platforms. And this is a trick in the King's Indian that actually Ivanchuk fell for once. Um, yes, Mountain Dude, in the previous game where I showed you instead of castles, they played King D2, which was a bit of a blemish as far as I'm concerned. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So this is a mainline King's Indian. And here. Um, oh, no, it was Bishop G5, F5. Bishop C1. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm getting excited because I just remembered now how the game went. For a second, I thought I was going to embarrass myself because I didn't remember, but now I do remember. So yeah, bishop c1, all mainline theory, f5, all mainline theory. And here there are a number of uh, good moves for black, uh, excuse me, for white. The main theoretical lines are capture, capture, bishop g5 back, and even castles. However... There is a very tempting yet terrible move here for white, which is this h3 kicking the knight out idea, obviously banking on the fact that after knight f6, e5 becomes a little bit tender. However, black here has a sensational idea, and I'm actually going to check with the YouTube viewers as well as with the chat now, if you guys can guess a sequence of moves, not just the one move, but at least a three move sequence to see how we can hurt the white king here. I wish I could just go like, and now chat pause and think, but I can't do that. Thank you, Prophet. Very good, Mr. Just at Blue. So the idea is, is that now we begin to hunt the king by virtue of taking on f2 first, takes, take on e4. 
Now knight takes is more or less forced because otherwise we regain the peace under favorable circumstances. And what needed to be seen was the fact that here, because without seeing this check, the whole story is worth absolutely zilch. Thank you so much for the Ray Chess Dojo Live. We are right in the middle of a lecture on uh, luring the king out to the open, aka King Hunts. Um, yeah, so this check needed to be seen. Without seeing that, the whole sack is worth nothing. So take, take, check, take, take, check. And now there is this extremely beautiful, uh, visually stunning vi uh, picture where after e4, both knights are pinned. And um, more or less, actually, both will be lost. Or, yeah, major drama is going to go down here no matter what. Because to get out of this pin is going to prove... Thank you, thank you. It's going to prove to be borderline impossible. Um, and so black here is going to regain material uh, with interest. Therefore, they tried to play key king e3. And now comes the second question of how do we continue the attack and the king hunt? By the way, just to plug my Chess Principles Reloaded courses on Chessable here, um, King Safety has a chapter on King Hunts as well. So if you would like to know more about the secrets of this, then uh, check out my Chess Principles Reloaded King Safety course. Once again, Carl, thank you for the subby. Which actually just put us north of uh, 300, I think. Hmm. So, what is the way to go? Oh, the prophet. The prophet is telling us the goods, indeed. So, the idea here, as almost always when we are hunting the king, is to go check and then try to lure the king further and further out and no material is ever going to mean a thing we just don't care about material now after king e4 who can give me at least a line that has four moves three to four moves it's not gonna be mate at that point but um at least uh you know, something conclusive or semi-conclusive would be good. How shall we proceed from here? Once again, thank you to Kostya for the raid. And welcome raiders. And because of I'm a champion at the streaming business, I just managed to close down the window where I'm watching the stream, so I have no idea about what the chat just said. No, nope, no lines yet. Okay, I might have to break the silence in the eyes then. So what's the first check? That's obvious, yeah? First check. Yeah, bishop f5 check, forcing the king to d5. What's the follow up check? Yeah, we are very, very close. Okay, we are getting there. So the idea, guys, is, is that after bishop f5 check, which is the correct move, king d5, c6 check, king takes d6. Now, if you calculated the queen sack, so after bishop h6 check, when we play this, and here you start calculating the consequences of the queen sack. If you in your head manage to force this king to d6, 
you can simply conclude that there is just no way on planet Earth that this does not end in a mate. Okay, that would be a greater miracle than Magnus Carlsen speaking up about what the heck he's doing. So you can actually, I wouldn't encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to try to look deeper, but I most certainly would tell you that you need to develop a sense of uh, understanding how safe a king can get or unsafe that he, you go like, there is no way that this is not made and I will calculate it when I get there. It's not optimal, but it does develop or help another skill of yours, which is the ability to tell things without um, calculating them out, such as, is this possible that this king doesn't get mated? Answer, no. Once again, my preference is if you can calculate it out, but if you can't, then you can't, in my opinion, in this case, not go for it because, well, I couldn't see it because the king on d6 just has to get mated no matter what. So, and as usual, you carry on with checks like there was no tomorrow. Now, after, you would be worried about the king getting out with uh, this way, but you see, that's the exact point that uh, even if it was white to move after king c5, knight check denies that. Well, I mean, no, you can't say that. that that's an invalid worry. 100% invalid worry for two reasons. A, because it's black to move. And so you can do about that. And two, because the I wouldn't see knight a6 check in this position is just, well, I hate to be the, the dude who tells you that, but that's not acceptable. So after check, we have got four black, excuse me, white king moves. Can you see a fool's mate against any of them? Let's... Let's try to deal with uh, every single one of them. So if you see a line that check ends in a checkmate against the, any of the star moves, type it in the chat, please. Uh, King C7, Knight A6 is not made yet because B7 hangs. In fact, that's a way to botch it. Now, King C5 is met by knight a6 mate or as per said by daniel bishop f8 mate that's the easiest the second easiest is king c7 which is mate in two prophet you're still not on the money because rook d7 is also not made because of king c8 yeah but sergeant major is helping you out so king c7 is met by rook d7 king c8 knight a6 mate yep so now we have got the two toughest cookies left. One of them is king e7, the other one is king e5. So, um, yeah, they are not necessarily super duper easy, but they are all checking mates. So there is no way that the white king can avoid its fate. Let's start with king e5. Who can type in, who will be the first to give me mate? By the way, the prophet typed in king e7, and uh, that's a beautiful mate. That's not the one I uh, would be going for. He went uh, check king f6, and then check here. Which I think is the faster mate compared to the one I wanted to go for. Because now after king takes, we have rook e6 mate. And if they come here, there's bishop f8, king down, and knight mate. Beautiful work. So that's done dusted with king e7. So the only one left is king here. Now, don't forget, Velcro, that after knight d7, we have got king d6 back. So, there is more work needed to be done there. Not to say that knight d7 is wrong or anything. It's to say that that's not made. We need a full line. We need a full line arena. 
Hey, I just wanted to thank you for the treasure trove that is your YouTube channel. You are an absolute legend, Cav823. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel, your solution is actually correct, um, although it's not checking all the way, but uh, your objective is to get a mate and you pull that off beautifully. So I definitely uh, give you the full marks for that. So after king e5, check king d6. Um, there are myriads of ways to give a checkmate by force. My favorite one was knight c5 check because it's so cocky. With the idea that if king takes then bishop mate here. If the king goes to c7 it's mate here. If the king goes to e7 it's still mate on d7. And if the king goes here then we have got check. And now the whole party or the whole crew is rather joining the party. And again king here is met by mate. And king here is met by mate. I'm not claiming this to be the simplest. But it's definitely one that goes with checks all the way. Uh... Daniel wanted bishop f8 check, king uh, c7 and then rook a b8 with an unstoppable rook c8 mate. And uh, yeah, nothing wrong there. Nothing wrong there. And um, that's it. That concludes this game. Um, which is also an absolute beaut. And probably I will make this the main line because I don't know when I'm copying out the... I think when I copy out the PD, uh, the PGM for you guys. Uh, I think it does come actually with the variations. Let's have a look. Yeah, it does actually. So that's for you, Vakro. That's for you. And now... How do you develop the idea that the position was definitely mateable? I mean, look, it is a level of intuition that exists in everyone. It is just uh, a different... Uh, you, you have that sense at different points. So I guess for you, you had a sense that this had to be made. Whereas for me, I already knew it here, that there was no way that this can get away. It's a bit like uh, just, uh, you know, there are a lot of... I don't know what to call it. Large numbers or whatever. Like it, it's it's it seems completely unfathomable that a king that is meant to be here, six rank away from safety, surrounded by black pieces, could possibly not get mated. That just would be so wrong on so many levels. I would almost say that the game is flawed if this is not a guaranteed mate. But the more of this you see. The, the better understanding and uh, feel you develop for these sorts of things. All right, let's move on to next. I think I'm going to show you two more. Now, I really am not sure if I will remember this correctly. So if I, if I choke up on this. Um, then uh, you will have to bear with me. But I think I may be able to... Uh, recall this. So here we go. Take, take, take. Oh boy. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Bishop c4 back here. Yeah, that's it. e5, d3, bishop g4. Phew! That was tight. Okay. Um, who can tell me what's wrong with knight e5 here? It's jackal. Puzzles are one of the best, but um, for example, uh, pawn ending calculations, solving studies, and just general solving positions that uh, have a lot of forcing lines in them is a very good way to calculate, to practice calculation. Correct. So 95 is met by 95 when the bishop is defended. So for this reason, white played first h3. And only after bishop h5 did they take on e5. Now, this is by far the hardest as far as calculation concerned. Um, 
among the examples I'm showing you because as you will see in this game there will be actually quite a number of non-checking moves but let's lure the king out first as far as we can so can someone give me a sequence here that will bring the black king out to the open Don't forget I asked for a sequence, not a single move. Very good. So Prophet is typing in the line that I was really hoping to get. So the first major um, crossroads, I suppose, is where we get to King e7, Bishop g5, King d6, Knight e4 check and King takes e5. This is a very important juncture because a lot of people would here do one of two things. One go like uh oh we lost another piece this is not gonna work and they just discard it which is one bad way to not to do this which by the way is a fundamentally the best way to play the game or two they would think and i'm not gonna blame them for this by the way too hard they would think that after f4 king f5 it's a force mate with g4 which for you now to see is super easy right you just see that this is not made because the bishop takes but remember that when you calculate all this from here it's not something that would be difficult to overlook because your calculation starts here with knight e5 so you had to see all that shebang until the king walked out to e5 and since you had obvious checks to continue the calculation you do so and then you go like uh oh king f5 is made and king d4 will be met with mate 2 which i will show you and so you call the you pull the trigger whereas the reality is is that whilst this is fully correct um there is actually no mate here however there is a mate after f4 king f5 which is what Very good. So it's knight g3 mate. Now many of you already are typing to me that okay, but there is king d4. What then? Now two things that we need to note about this position. One, this would be a good point to call it uh, an almost certainly black is not going to get away with this uh, evaluation because um, they just shouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Number one reason is the fact that even if it were black to move right now, the black king can't go backwards. So even if it was black to move now, I could not play a single move that would allow my king to go back next. So the, these three squares are covered respectively by the knight, the pawn and the bishop. And black can't influence any of these three or take or hassle or call it whatever. So what that means is that here, we have got two moves to mate black. And the first idea that comes to mind is king d2 with the idea of an unstoppable mate of c3, which is a gorgeous checkmate. But unfortunately, after king d2, black reigns the party big time with bishop takes c2 and um, oopsie daisy, we are going to lose. So the correct move here, unbelievably, is to simply eliminate the bishop and thus renewing the threat. And this is a really scary move to play because uh, now it's black to move. And um, yeah, you feel like there is so much they can do to avoid the mate. But the reality is, is that again, we managed to force the king too far out so that this is past the point of no return. I don't think c3 works here because then after king takes d3, all of a sudden one of the most important attacker is actually under attack. So rook takes is a problem. 
The, the point though is, is that I, after this, now obviously we are threatening with king d2 and mate on c3, but black has defenses against that, so they are going to take on g5. Right, and now the mate is still, hmm, how do we do this exactly? Now the game ended with c3 check, obviously forcing again the king deeper and deeper in uh, to enemy territory. This is our bread and butter. And here, according to the engine, the cleanest way is to simply take the queen and then go for mate. The game continued with castles. And here, white has got a mate in free threat. Can we spot the mate threat? What would white do if it was white to move? Yeah, it is a real game, yes. It is a real game. Very good, you guys absolutely smashed it. So it's rook check king e2, rook check king e1, and then rook f1. I don't remember the name of the players. Uh, I memorized the game, but I don't remember the name of the players because they were two lesser known dudes. From the... Yeah, somehow it tells me that I assumed at the time when I read that book that it was Serbian players because of the names. It's in... Um, um, sorry. It's in Jonathan Levitt's uh, fantastic book about uh, chess beauty. Um, so yeah, that's where I saw this game first. Uh, Secrets of Spectacular Chess, that's it. That's one of my all-time favorite books. So, um, the correct uh, defense here is the absolutely astonishing Queen C5, which by the way wasn't found in the game. In the game, they played actually Queen H4. Um, and uh, got promptly mated by the exact uh, staircase motif. Note that Queen F4 is mating one. And if knight d4, second best defense, then we calmly take this, um, retaining various mating ideas. So yeah, this is this is gonna be gonna be painful for white. So here the idea is simply rook f2, and then how do we mate them though? Okay, let's let's play a pass. I'm I'm curious how the engine wants to finish it. Another pass, and then rook e1, king d3, and then. Rook D2 mate. Okay, fair enough. So as you can see, it's a long-term drag here a little bit. Um, the fact that the knight is hanging is irrelevant because uh, black is still ahead in material. Like, we absolutely have to finish this game with uh, mate or, yeah, gaining significantly more material. So as I said, the astonishing defensive method here against castles, which was not the best move, is queen c5. And the idea is that now if you try to do the staircase, it's a discovered check and a big, big whoopsie daisy. But now the engine finds out that after rook f2, there is no adequate way to defend against the, the mates again. Ouch! So if I play a bozo move just to demonstrate the idea, then comes knight g3 and knight f1 is unstoppable. Wow! Thank you, Mnakar. Uh, the idea is that uh, you will you will get there in that speed as well if you do those exercises frequently. Yeah, so it turns out that actually this is force mate too, so I just needed to leave the engine on long enough uh, to recognize that this is mate. Once again, the theme was the exact same, which was that we sacked the queen, lured the king out to the open, and then... Uh, and then we just uh, went in for the kill. So that was game number three now, I believe. I hope that Velcro is still here, by the way, because, yeah. So that's for you, Velcro, again. That's the next uh, PGN. And the last game, I'm not going to even pretend that I remember. Although this comes from the exact same book that I was referring to. 
Um, this is one of my all-time favorites, actually, when it comes to king hunts. And again, I'm going to show you um, the entire game, because I like them to be seen from the beginning in their full, in their entirety. Oh, shoot, 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 you didn't see what happened there. You did not see what happened there. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, you did not see any of that. So this game was played by uh, uh, an English, I think, uh, grandmaster called David Norwood, who I always find very funny because uh, I don't remember which platform. I think it was on ICC. I played a fair number of games against him, and his uh, username on all platforms, I think, is Dave No Good, which I quite f find quite funny. Um, so this is Dave No Good uh, playing with the white pieces. Um, and uh, I'm going to breeze through the opening slash early middle game to cut to the chase. So very weird King's Indian attack occurred where black just castled queenside. And so now we have got this weird scenario where technically white should be attacking on the king side and black should be playing on the queen side. But the respective king's positions make it, uh, let's just go with risky. Uh, rook g8, c4. This is a typical method, by the way, to contest the center and the d5 pawn in particular. And this is a bad move because it allows this, but more importantly, it gives up the e4 square. b4, pawn sack, g6, take, 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 and rook b1. H5, knight E4, we are getting there, ladies. We are getting there. Take, back, take. So black's attack was complete bluff fest. Uh, black has got nothing and he's dead lost here. And now comes uh, now comes the real story. Check. Bishop uh, kick out. Queen E7. Rook takes B7. Now, the reason why this game is not as valuable, in my opinion, as the others, because here... The chasing the king out to the open part already happens when white is like completely winning and has 7,000 winning moves. So king b7, queen e4. For the record, check was a much better move, but I think he saw the idea that was going to decide the game. And that was f5. And now comes the king chase arena obviously you guys all are super excited about the possibility of queen takes c6 so let's see how far we can calculate this story What says you? Tuck, tuck, check, 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 check. How far can we force this king? Wow, in 2017, Norwood donated 1.9 million pounds to Cable College's future hub for innovation at Oxford University. Jesus. How much is he willing to donate to me for displaying his game on my stream? Uh, no one wants sense. If you were my student, I would be having a massive go at you for not calculating checking lines. Rook B1 is a non-check and as such it does not fly. 
I know that your idea was a marvelous knight d4 double check checkmate, but I have got moves like e5, which is going to shield the diagonal of the bishop, allowing black to walk away. Okay, insane lonely bear, you are very, very, very close. So that is a good piece of calculation there. I will play this out. Insane lonely bear went check, correct, check, correct, only move, check, correct. King a6, check, correct, king a5, and this is where you went wrong, and that's actually where most people go wrong by going check um, on c7, um, which is uh, no go, because that can be blocked by the knight. The correct move instead is bishop d2 check, and now after king a4, bishop check, king takes um, bishop check, we have got a fabuloso mate, king here, rook check, king here, and knight mate. Note that in this position, if the king goes back to a3, we also have knight c2 mate, so it makes no difference. Not bad, eh? Not bad. Those snipey boys have done a fair bit of legwork in this puzzle. So check, check, and then the bishop started uh, their dirty work. Bang, 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 mate. I reckon that was pretty neat. Like I said, a slight blemish that uh, the puzzle occurred when the game was already completely decided. But nonetheless, the, the mate and the whole combination is nothing short of uh, sensational. So that, ladies and gents, is going to conclude this mini lecture uh, about the chasing the king out to the open. The main takeaways, obviously, or the main takeaway is, is that... Uh, the further you force the king out, the more likely it's going to get mated. So, on that note, this is going to be us for now. Thanks for watching, boy. That was for YouTube. You don't go anywhere.